any of y'all like me, uh, this is kind of more of a hobby and you know, if you like to do woodwork and everything, and what I'm trying to do, um, I guess with these videos and everything, kind of show the, you know, kind of what I'm doing, kind of amateur or whatever, but um, putting together some kitchen cabinets and everything, so going from taking some raw lumber and uh, also showing how to, you know, do some things on the saw. Um, so on this one, I'm just going to kind of call it setting up the feeder. Um, and this is kind of more specific to the Felder um, C301 combo. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to kind of go through over here. I'll move the camera in a minute. And what it takes to uh, put the feeder up and get it ready. Um, Felder has another mount. I wish that mount fit this, um, this machine because it's a lot better mount because it sits up here flat and when you bring the feeder back I think it actually allows you to bring it back you know over the end here um, the problem was it's too narrow to be able to keep this table extension mount if they would have just made it like I mean a quarter of an inch narrower um, I think that would be a lot better than uh, the mount that fits this all so anyway I'm going to move the camera over so you can see what a pain in the butt it is um, with this setup. To, to, it's not that bad, but to, to get it up. The other one, you know, you can just leave it sideways and go down. This one, you got to turn it down and bring it up. And Anyway, I thought I would just, um, for those of you who have this saw or thinking about getting a feeder on it, um, just kind of let you see what it really takes, you know. Um, the instruction it came with it was kind of weird on how it said to do it. Um, really wasn't that clear, but uh, anyway, um, I kind of figured it out. We'll see how hard it is um, for me to do it. So I just got it, um, and this is probably going to be one of the first times I actually lift it up. So I'm going to get the camera and get a better look. Now, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hold it by the motor. And we'll loosen this up. And what's going to happen is motor's going to drop down. Okay. So I got to kind of pick it up a little bit. Alright. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of snug it in place real quick. Alright. Move this out of the way. Alright, now I got it pointing straight down. Okay. It's going to be kind of heavy, so what I'm going to try to do, now I'm going to lift it up, and then I'm going to try to put the weight on the other side. The motor, I'll show you. So I'm going to take this, pick it up. I want to get it up there. I'm going to loosen this. See what I mean? Pretty heavy. Bring the motor up and put the weight on this side. Okay? Alright. It's not light. So now, you see how this mount right here works. Kind of down like that. The other one rolled back from the back. So anyway, let's screw this in. And they, when it, in the filter, when they sent this mount, they sent some of these handles, extra ones. And now I know why. Because when I put it down, you got to leave it straight up. I didn't. I already kind of snapped this handle already. So. Okay. And that's it. So now, the feeder is up and ready to position. So y'all kind of saw me drop it down a little bit, but you know it's almost, um, I don't know what they could have done to make it easier, but uh, like I said, it's pretty heavy. So, And this is a Felder S308 feeder, which is not the smallest one, it's kind of the next up, but still, it's one heavy feeder. So that was it, now it's in place. 
you know, a little bit. I want to make some styles and rails for face frames. Um, you know, later on we'll do them for the doors. Um, basically, I'm going to have six style doors. Later on, like this. So, this is an end panel on one of the cabinets. I haven't finished this yet, but you can get the idea. So, let me go through the first part. Maybe I'll break these videos up, I don't know, but I just gotta go through and show you the process um, on starting to get the um, feeder position, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set this. I got two inch size of rails on my bottoms. And I'm gonna set this right there. Everybody says it's a waste, but you know, I always like to run through the planer and get an exact thickness. I also have a sander too, but it's just faster to take it through the planer and use a so I'm gonna set that at two and a quarter. Okay. Now what I've done is set my fence back. Now Felder, I haven't tried it yet. I'm, I might. Felder sells uh, different fences, so maybe the other fence might be a little better for uh, doing this, but anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, get that kind of lined up, and then what I'm going to do is loosen this up, start cranking that, and this takes a little time. start doing it. I'll start rolling it down. I'll probably need to put a hook for that feeder up on the ceiling. Now when I have a candy shop we had two table saws. I had a jet and paramatic with feeders and they were running all the time. Uh, we had door manufacturing too, kind of doors, and we were manufacturing a couple hundred doors a day. You see, on that two inch, it's going to ride right inside that blade, so that's pretty good. Now, kind of get it set up, but now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'll get the uh, the board laid up under there so I can kind of set the height. down to my wheels and just blow it. The thing you want to do is make sure it's nice and the machine's flat, which in this case, hold on. Uh, my machine's a little off, so I want the wheels flat. Bring it out here a little bit. I'll lower it down until one of the wheels touches. This might be too thick. I'll move this out of the way. Right now, I'm going to keep lowering this. 
Now, see right here, well, that's pretty good. I'm not that far off. But what I want to do, I want to loosen this up a little bit. Get that tight. What I did is I loosened this joint here so I can get the wheels nice and straight. You can also, if you want to, you can put the board up there or you can get a pair of calipers too. If you want, but I kind of like it. Right there. I'm going to have to extend my fence a little bit. Just a slight angle on it. Right here. Now some people do this. Don't do that. It's just me. Whenever you go at such a strong angle, what I actually do, you have to really push hard on the back of the fence when the wood's going through because what I'll do, it'll bring that back when you run to the board it'll bring that back out so you don't want a big angle on it just enough to keep a little pressure against that fence when it runs through all right I'll raise it up let's get the board under like I said I could use calipers but I'll show you that one too doing it's a little too low I just want the wheels barely touching out these wheels she only want it just maybe a quarter inch or so below just like that that's about a quarter of an inch all right Okay. Now, we're going to have to move back just a hair. Right here, move it back just a hair. I want to make sure I don't hit that saw blade. The cool thing about this fence is when it's down like this, I don't have to take wheels out. I don't have to do anything. Um, just basically, it's going to ride on the other side of the blade. So, and now I'm going to raise the blade up. Just make sure I'm clearing. Okay. Alright. Now, when there's pressure on this, this is going to try to pull out a little bit. Okay? So, I mean, it's just going to flex. You want to make sure you got enough space in here between your blade. At least a half inch. So the flex doesn't hit your blade. Now 
looks like that's about perfect. Got a slight little angle on it. Okay. And if you're new at this, what I suggest you do is take your board you want to run through, drop your blade down, run the board through uh, with the feeder just to make sure it's right and right. And since this is the uh, first time I've set this up, it's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Locked. What I'm going to do in a minute Set up. So, and we're clear of the blade. And I'll take a picture of it. Um, I'll take a couple of pictures here so you can uh, see what I'm doing. All right, what I'm going to do now, we just went through and getting this all lined up and everything. So what I'm going to do right now is, and this is what I do when I'm running these boards, just make it easier. Um, I'm going to put some tubers left builder. What it is, it allows the wood to slide a lot easier on top of the, the table. So all I'm going to do is put some of this on there. Have a slide through. Now, I'm not going to put it on a sliding table, aluminum table. Um, it's fine. It, 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 it'll slide through just fine. It's not a lot of pressure on it. But I don't want to put some anything slippery on this table because I do, you know, hold wood down on it and stuff. So I don't want it to slide. So I was talking before. Once you kind of get it set up, um, what I always do. And what I'm doing since this is brand, you know, brand new unit, first time I've had on this particular saw, I got my angle set up and everything, I will check it. So I load the saw blade down all the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this board and I'm just going to do a test run through the feeder and make sure everything's feeding right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look. Just gonna line it up. Turn my machine on slow. Feeder. Right here, let's hold it up against the fence. But it is backing away a little bit. So I'm gonna back it up. I'm gonna put a little more of an angle on it. Been a few years since I've done this, but eventually I get you just get to where you know. But you know, let's try that again.
get through just fine. Alright. I got all this set up. Next thing to do is to um, run our first cut through. Okay, so I've changed the gearing and uh, this where position one is 27 two feet per minute and position two is 54 feet per minute so i'm going to sit here and i'm going to try to just go ahead and run it at 27 at first see how fast it goes and you know when i do the next one we'll turn it up on the high speed and see the difference in that the saw can handle in, in the um, rip blade um, and i'm sure it can uh, so this one I need a, a three inch for uh, in cabinet. So I'm gonna do that first, and then I'm gonna take a two inch out of here. So it's gonna get loud. Get my previous slower speed setting just a little bit. There we go. I got two more cabinets. All right, now I'll cut this into two. Well, yeah, my saw, on my filter, I don't know, maybe somebody at the factory messed up with the ruler. It's funny, the zero is on the left side of the curve. And using table saw mode, you cut everything on that side, so every time I put something, like if I wanted two inches, I got to add an eighth of an inch for whatever curve for, you know, what I have. So, if you have a filter and you kind of wonder what's going on on that, just remember, it's simple, just put your measurement at an eighth, you're done. Um, I don't feel like, I'm going to call them, but I don't feel like peeling all this off and all that and doing it, but I might later. Now, I'm going to lock the table on this one because it's, put, it's just pretty narrow. So let's see how this does. And I'm going to do it on the higher speed setting now. So this is going to be going at 54, a little over 54 feet per minute. I'm going to turn that on. Speed up to the higher speed. That's about the speed I used to use when I had 
the shop, you know, where we used to do a lot of doors and cannons. So, anyway, for ripping wood, it's like a hand at 54, no problem, man, with that rip blade that Felder has. Did it cut it pretty quick. On the fire stuff, I also, when I, when I cut, I also use force blades too, so, in case anybody out there is wondering. But, I'll be going through on this set the cabinets and uh oh so that's it if you have any questions about it let me know only thing i could say is just make sure when you tighten those bolts because they have a keyway you just need to snug them with just a little bit past snug don't over tighten them but other than that it seems like it works just fine thanks a little loud but i was gonna show in the video couple more passes on uh, cutting the board. That's how I did it. Check everything. Four and a quarter inches, perfect all the way down. So that's it as far as um, using the feeder to, to rip lumber. And I put it on high speed, so Made another video, I'll show them how you set up the feeder, the felder feeder, to do different speeds. And I might do that maybe before I do the next board. So, 
All right. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I thought real quick I'd add this in there real quick. I'm not going to be needing the feeder anymore, so I'm going to put it away. And uh, I'm not just doing to show you how to lower and everything, but I'm kind of doing this so, you know, guys out there who think about getting a feeder for your um, um, hammer, um, that way you kind of know, you know, how it works. Okay. So anyway, let me get this off. It's like a stinky table. Now I will say these extension tables are pretty heavy. Alright, let's get that out of the way. Alright, so what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is, is I am going to raise it up high. The reason is, is when I flip it over, I want to sit it low under my planer, so if I ever need to use it, I don't have to worry about this being in the way. So, I'm going to raise it up. Real quick. I'm going to loosen this. I'm going to straighten it up. It's about 90 degrees. Here where it's about 90 degrees. See, right there, it will clear. I'm going to turn it about 90 degrees. Now this gets a little tricky, so I'm going to tighten this. Not Gorilla Grip it that way. I can undo it because you're going to see in here in a minute. right where the shaft here, the spline right here when you're screwing in and out, just de-engage this, I'm going to re-engage it just to here. Okay, I'm going to lock this down. Here comes the fun part, this is heavy. It is heavy. So this right here releases the tilting, the, that's kind of locks it in place. What I'm going to do see this too good but I'm going to undo this right here and when you drop it down make sure this is straight if this, this little handle is not straight it will break kind of keep it to that side right there to the right alright I'm going to start lowering it down get a good hold on it squat down stops. Now what it does, it stops right here against the saw. Okay? So the next thing I got to do is I got to loosen this tilt right here. I want to lift it up a hair so it comes around. Okay? There you go. Now I'm going to lock this in place. And there you go. Now it's put away. And now I can start um, doing other things. And yeah, I can still put my table extension on there uh, when I need it. 
So that's pretty much it. So that's how I lower the shaper. It's not that bad. It's just heavy now. Like I said again, I got the Felder shaper. They also make a um, hammer. I'm sorry, not shaper, I mean feeder. Um, they also make a hammer feeder. I probably, if you're doing this for a hobby and everything, go look at the hammer feeder. It's lighter and uh, smaller mount. You might want to get that, but if you're doing real wide, thick stuff or really big profiles in the shaper, uh, like I'll be doing, you, know, you might want the, the bigger unit. Um, the, the biggest unit you can put on this saw from Felder, um, if you look at it, what they recommend. So the S308 is probably the biggest one you ever want to put on this uh, C331 uh, combination um, unit. Um, anyway, Felder can help you with that. They did with me. Um, you can look at the book. It also kind of tells you what um, these, these feeders fit. So and that's it for um, ripping wood, setting up the uh, feeder. And